As a convert to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I have experienced the life-changing power of the gospel firsthand. My journey has not been without its challenges, but through all, I have learned that when we trust in the Savior, we are led by His light and love. The gospel has brought me peace, clarity, and a deep understanding of my own purpose for this earth. I choose to follow Christ, not place others, but to honor my relationship with God, who knows me intimately and loves me perfectly. My faith is grounded in the knowledge that through Christ, we can overcome every trial and grow closer to him. Here are some questions I'd asked you a while ago in my Instagram stories. And I have nine questions from you that I want to address. Some are hurtful, others are controversial, and others are filled with joy. So I pray that you find my answers will resonate with what you may be going through or maybe questions you may have. First question I received is, do you feel like you are being used by the church as a gay member? Question mark. No, absolutely not. I do not feel used at all. I joined the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to please God, to please him, not man. My decision to stay in the church is deeply personal, grounded in my own testimony and the peace that brings me. I've met countless gay members across the globe, each of us drawn by the truth of the gospel. If anything, I feel empowered to share my unique perspective and experience as a gay Christian. Remember, the Lord asks us to follow him with all of our heart. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 and do this for him, not for others. End of story. Question number two I received. Why do you support Joseph Smith, a child fiddler? Okay, I know exactly where this is coming from. I know this person. I recognized his screen name. When he said this, he left the church and he wants nothing but to bring all of us down with him. So this is my reply. It is important to address this with truth and compassion. There is no credible historical evidence that Joseph Smith was involved in any criminal, criminal misconduct, especially not the accusations in your question. Joseph Smith was a prophet called by God to restore the gospel of Jesus Christ. His life and ministry in any human endeavor, but the gospel is about Jesus Christ and his atonement for all of us. John chapter 14, verse six. Slandering anyone living or dead without facts is against the teachings of Christ found in Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. Seek truth with an open heart and the spirit will guide all of you. The third question that I received was, what is the most important thing you've learned from your mom and or your dad? From my mom, I've learned resilience, watching her face life's challenges, especially recently with their health struggles, has shown me the importance of never giving up. From my dad, I've learned the value of hard work and dedication. He always has been committed to providing our family, for our family, and his actions taught me the importance of loyalty and integrity. It reminds me of Proverbs 22, verse 6. It reminds all of us, quote, Train up a child in a way he should go, and when he is old, he will depart from it, close quote. Both my parents have insert, installed 
or instilled values in me that I hold dear to this day. Question number four, were your parents Latter-day Saint before or did you join after? Question mark. My parents are not of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They are Christian, but we don't share the same faith. I am grateful for the love and the support they've shown me despite the differences, and I pray for them daily. My family is eternal, and my belief in the eternal ceilings of family found in Malachi chapter 4, verse 6, gives me hope and comfort that we will all be united one day. And this is what I stand by. My friend Lori, who goes by the screen name Grand Grammy um, 25, your parents raised you well. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Lori, you've been in my thoughts a lot in my prayers. Um, I'll reach out to you over the weekend. Now, even though my parents are of not of my faith, there's still challenges. In the beginning, they didn't believe I was Christian or they didn't believe that I joined a church that believed in the same Jesus as them. Well, now their hearts have softened immensely. Question number five. What advice would you give to anyone looking to join the church? Well, this is easy. Seek answers with an open heart and mind and trust in the spirit to guide you. The church is true and the gospel of Jesus Christ has the power to change lives. I think of myself, what it's done for me from being against the church to now being in the church. It's really softened my heart. But it requires commitment, faith, and willingness to follow Christ. Don't rush the process. Study, pray, attend church, and meet with the missionaries. James 1.5 promises us, quote, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, and it shall be given to him, close quote. God will reveal the truth to you in his time. I also said, take your time. I was three weeks after being a walk into the church and I was baptized. So I'm one to talk about taking time, but you're making commitments with God. And once you make those commitments, if you choose to leave, I would rather you choose not to be baptized because I don't want you to break those covenants that you're making when you partake in what's called the fourth article of faith. Immersion, full immersion through the remission of sins and the laying of the hands to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So again, follow your promptings. Follow what's in here, what's in your heart. Feel that burning. If you need to be baptized after two weeks, the missionaries hold the keys. If you feel like you need to be baptized after two years, again, meet with those who have authority. Question number six, how accepting have members and non-members been for your conversion? Honestly, both members and non-members have been incredibly supportive of my conversion. I felt the overwhelming love from fellow church members and even non-members have respected my decision to follow Christ in this way. There will always be those who misunderstand or judge, but that's part of life. Matthew chapter 5, verse 10 through 12. Overall, I feel embraced and loved, especially by those who see my heart and know my faith. I would say the, um, the biggest blessing I've had this week was interviewing my friend Tala for my YouTube channel, who's pagan. We found so many similarities I never saw that I was like, what? And then last week I interviewed a Greek Orthodox and then somebody from India. I was going by the prompting of the spirit 
And that's prompting hasn't let me down. So whenever we follow those promptings, God will not lead us astray. Number seven, what started your turning point back to our Savior? Now, I love this question because I recognize the screen name. He's a um, somebody who's preparing to serve a mission who asked this question in my Instagram stories. And the turning point for me was a combination of things, prayer, personal trials, and the love of Christ that shown to me by members of the church. There was a moment when I knew I needed more in life. And as I turned to Christ, I felt his love in a way I had never experienced before. In Alma, chapter 36, verse 20, describes perfectly what I felt. Quote, and oh, what a joy. And what marvelous light I did behold. My soul was filled with joy as exceeding as was my pain, close quote. That was a powerful reminder to me that anybody's heart can be softened. We just have to follow those promptings. Number eight, how, question number eight, how do you feel after you got baptized? Baptism was one of the most powerful and transformative experiences of my life. I felt clean, renewed, and filled with the Holy Ghost. The joy and peace I experienced were incredible. It's a feeling of being completely united with God and starting fresh. Acts chapter 2 verse 38 says, quote, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, close quote. The gift has continued to guide and comfort me daily since my baptism. And I can testify that it's true. My friend Sandy, first of all, thank you for the badges. She's responsible Responding to Dreamer Books, I'm the only member in my family too. We just need to love everyone. That is so true. And my friend Sandy is like my second mom. She's like my church mom, I guess you could say. I I can testify that she does have the spirit. I feel it. I know it. I have witnessed it. And I can't deny that she... She was baptized later in life. She was a nurse who took care of two prophets. And she was not a member. And both prophets told her she was going to be baptized. She has a, several miracle conversions that are both, uh, both stories are on my YouTube channel. You can find them. Um, well, it's kind of hard because I think I have 1,600 videos on YouTube. Oh my gosh. Okay, um, the last question is question number nine. Your church didn't allow blacks in the priesthood. Why do you support it? This is an important and sensitive question and I want to address it with both honesty and compassion. The history of the church, like the history of many institutions, reflects the time which it existed. While it is true that there were a period when black members were not ordained to the priesthood, it equally important to recognize that the church has allowed and taught that all people are children of God and this love is for all. In in 1978, under the direction of Prophet Spencer W. Kimball, the priesthood was extended to all worthy male members of the church, regardless of their race, through the revelation of God. Now, before I continue on this, Joseph Smith, there is accounts that Joseph Smith and Brigham Young allowed blacks in the temple. And I was also aware that Joseph Smith 
would allow blacks to attend church with them and said, I don't know the exact quote, but he's like, all men and women are created equal. There's a movie, Jane and Emma, or Emma and Jane, I forget, where it's a true story of how they had a black woman living with them and they were paying them wages. And the other members were like, why, are, why isn't she a slave? And the reason being is because Joseph said, we need to pay them all equally. We're human. And so there, I always say there's your story, my story, and the truth. And this is important to recognize. But to go further with what I prepared, this was not a policy change made by man, but by revelation from the Lord similar to how many prophets throughout history have received revelations at specific times. Amos chapter 3 verse 7, the church, the church acknowledged the hurt caused by this past and is committed to fostering unity and love amongst all people. The gospel of Jesus Christ is centered on love, inclusion, and the infinite value of every soul. As scripture says, God is no respecter of persons. Acts 10 verse 34. And today the church reflects that through truth. I support the church because it is led by continued revelation. And most importantly, because the teachings, the gospel of Jesus Christ in its fullness we learn to grow as church, as a church. And I stand by the truth that we are all equal under God's eyes. It is also my understanding that the reason why in the 1800s, um, blacks were not allowed in the church anymore. They had to come back because the U.S. government was putting pressure on us. Now, that is my opinion. I don't want it to be quoted as factual. I'm a convert, I'm learning, and I'm growing. But I just wanted to answer and address your questions. Now, in closing, I want to testify that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is true. And it has filled my life with more joy and peace than I could ever imagine. I know that the prophet Joseph Smith was a prophet who restored the fullness of the gospel and that we are led by a living prophet today. I, the love of God and the power of the atonement of Jesus Christ has carried me through my darkest moments. And I stand as a witness that through him, all things are possible. I continue to rely on his strength and I know that by building my foundation on the rock of our Redeemer, I will always and continually find peace and joy. I can testify that no matter your race, religion, sexual orientation, that you are welcomed in this gospel, just like it says we preach to all nations. And I say this is my testimony in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to go back to that first question that I answered. For those of you who weren't on this live then, the first question was, do you feel like you're being used by the church as a gay member? You couldn't be further from the truth. No, I do not feel used at all. The church is a place for all. And like it says in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, all do this for him, not for others. I joined this church to please God, not you. End of story. My friend Karen says, being the only member in my family is a challenge, but most importantly, it's blessings. I get to share the gospel with all my family and do the temple work for all my ancestors. You know, I had, Karen, thank you for sharing that. Um, there's a friend of mine that I haven't spoken to in a while. 
Uh, he attended a fireside that I, my very first fireside I did, him and his wife in Pasadena, California. And I need to reach out to him. I, I want to ask him to do an Instagram takeover for my account. I don't even know if he's on Instagram, to be honest. Um, I know he's on Facebook, but I don't use Facebook much. And I want to reach out to him. I feel like, like he has such a great testimony of serving a mission of joining the church and he um, is in a same-sex attraction marriage ssa marriage and him and his wife i consider dear friends and i just want to after i'm done with this later tonight i'm going to text him and see if his iphone's still active <laughs> and just touch base because i feel like it's important to I can't explain it. I don't know why I'm sharing this now. Well, yeah, I do the spirit, but it's just like, I don't know. It's like, I just am getting, I rely on the spirit a lot. And just like I pray every time before I go live and every time I go, I'm done. I, I end the live. After I hit end on here, I will do a prayer. My friend, um, R-E-A-P says, hello, hope all is well with you and the family. It is, I'm just finishing this, so I'm done. I will get this uploaded to my YouTube playlist and I pray that it resonated with somebody. Have an awesome night and or morning, depending on what part of the world you're in. Uh, my friend C-A-R says, I'm sorry for the naive would you ever get married to a female? Oh, you can ask me anything. My life is an open book. Literally, it's an open book. And I don't ever want you to feel like I'm embarrassed or it's, you know, and I love the fact that you use the word naive. And because we're all a little bit naive. But I... I don't know. I've been proposed to several times. I do have a friend that I am very fond of, a female that is a member of the church. Um, we, She's probably my best friend. And I have thought about it, but it's in God's hands. It's in his hands. So I don't know the answer to that question yet. It's ever evolving, just like Revelation. And my friend Carrie says, uh, love that. Yes, it's, um, yeah, it's ever changing. And what I feel today may not be the feeling tomorrow, or I may go to the temple tomorrow and have a different revelation. You never know. It's ever changing. And that's, one thing I love about our gospel is it's forever changing. You know, the policy about same-sex marriage or the policy about, um, I'm sorry, not same-sex marriage, when in November 2015, when the prophet came out and said same-sex couples weren't allowed to have their children baptized in the church, that was later reversed in April of 2019. So we are a church of prophecy and revelation. We may not know the answers of all things at that time, but I can trust that those that come up with those policies and procedures do know the answers. And I can also sustain that marriage is between a man and a woman, as it says in scripture, in, in, in foundation, which can't be changed but policies and procedures can. Have a great day, everybody. And I'll say, God loves you. I can testify to that. Bye for now. Oh, one last question from my friend C-A-R. I remember when that was reversed. Do you ever think same-sex ban will be reversed? Well, there is no same-sex ban because the church, it says visitors welcome on all the doors. I think what you're asking is, do you think same-sex couples will be able to be sealed in the temple? 
Uh, my answer is no. I believe that marriage is between a man and a woman. And I support that 100%. But again, I'm not the prophet. I'm not an apostle. That is called of God. And I'm just Dennis. Um, and she goes, yes, that's what I was asking. Oh, um, no, don't you be apologetic at all. We all make, you should see the mistakes I make. <laughs> As I'm learning, that's what it's all about. We're learning together. Have an awesome week.